Okay, so I'm Bram Gupta, and uh, I'm founder of SRB Technology. This, this is the company which built this product, RoboMQ.io. We are a startup based in McLean, Virginia. And RoboMQ.io is a horizontal message queue as a service platform for IoT, M2M, and application integration. And we have built it, like, the key criteria that we have built it on is open, standard-based, and expandable platform. And I'm going to go into detail of those. So looking at the problem, uh, just like the internet today, internet of things is going to be some network of this kind, public information, private information, systems sharing information, and we have another player in this mix, which is device. And devices are going to make this population really grow. And the key characteristics will remain the same, sharing information, transacting business, and building an econ economy of order of trillions of dollars. I mean, it's projected that there'll be 19 tr trillion dollars of economic value created, and there are going to be 50 billion devices with connected devices, sensors, connected homes, and we heard a lot of such things before in the presentations. So what's the problem? The problem is the data, right? I mean, the devices are there. Devices have to send the data. Data is meaningless until or unless it's converted into information. And what's happening and what's going to continue to happen is that Devices are going to come in with their own proprietary connection mechanism. Anybody who brings in device has to realize the value of that information, and there comes a way to connect the device and get the data. There are browsers, there are clouds, there are going to be proprietary mechanism, and all that is going to create the silos of information. This data will be available, but can that be used? Can that be made into information? Can we break the silos? And this is what has happened in other industries also. I mean, the team that built this product, we come from uh, telecommunication, real-time activation and provisioning. We build systems for when you pick up the phone and it gets activated on the network provisioned across some 15 or 20 systems. So silos of data is a problem, and that has to be broken to create, really get the networking effect of the data. Once you have more than one data set, the value is more. So that's the problem that we are trying to solve here. And to that, we have built this platform, which is open, standards-based hub built on message queue as a service so that it can support diversity of devices and platform. We have used AMQP-based broker. It's a industry standard, and it's an international standard for interoperability of message queues, widely used across financial industry, uh, trading platform, a lot of the trading platforms run on AMQP, used in telecommunication, and we, have, we are supporting all open standards. No proprietary mechanism, we are supporting most of the protocols like MQTT, Stomp, REST, WebStomp, and then we have provided some value-added features like analytics, and I'm going to talk about it. We have a big database analytics engine, dashboard, monitoring, alert, and support for all kinds of devices. Now, the one question that comes in when you have message queues, middleware, something as a hub in the middle is, how good is the performance? So we have benchmarked our product at 2 million messages per second, which is 172 billion messages per day. And just to look at it in perspective, WhatsApp has 50 billion messages a day. There are 500 million tweets a day. And there are 153 billion SMS sent in the, per day in US. And just to give more information on this, this is a 30-node cluster, which is what we are offering for the shared tenancy. So 30-node cluster is offered on the shared tenancy, and uh, it's running a mid-size, like 16 CPU Google Compute Engine nodes. Coming to some of the features, it's built on open standard AMQP-based message queues. That's at the heart of it. It supports multiple protocol, MQ for telemetry, Stomp, Web Stomp. If you want to do the interaction on the browser, it's very much similar to WebRTC. REST and, of course, advanced message queuing protocol is supported. And again, that offers a choice for different devices, right? different profile of device, different footprint of device, different capability of device. You can choose the protocol that meets the best need. Typically, AMQP, REST, these are the protocols which enterprise systems are going to use. WebStomp, if you're building some mobile application or 
doing some JavaScript, web-based. Stomp is very simple, can be used across anywhere, and MQTT for places where the network is not very reliable. So that protocol is supported. It's an expandable platform. What we mean is we haven't, I mean, we are not focused on building very specific functionality or ways to use the platform. The platform provides message queues at the core, and then you can build more application on top of it as an expandable platform which does not disrupt the existing consumption of the message. So the earlier stream of message or information that's going through can go on, and there's a parallel. In parallel, you can add another application and expand this. And we have two examples of that. We're going to talk about it. It's a cloud-based with enterprise hosting options for larger corporation which want it in their own private data center. It has web-based management, UI, and dashboard. And it supports multiple programming language. We have SDK in five languages. We continue to grow. But the number of languages supported are limited by the number of languages which support these protocols. And almost every language supports these protocols. And we continue to grow the uh, SDK that we have on the Git, GitHub. Key differentiator, no vendor lock-in. Keep the infrastructure independent of the data interchange. Now I'm going to talk about what are the core components of it. So at the core, it's a message queue as a service. It's available on the cloud as a shared tenancy, as a dedicated cluster, and you can also go for enterprise hosting options. Then we have the management UI. This is more administrative UI to keep pulse of the messaging activities. You can do administration, manage the connection, users, all that information is there. It's not really your operation tool, it's more of an administration tool. Can be used for operation also, but it's more of a management tool. We have the next component, which is more focused on the operations, and that's the messaging dashboard that we have. So it's a single pane of glass. So uh, this monitors some 23 attribute of messaging, like connections, queues, consumers, delivery rate, how many messages are delivered, how many are sitting in there, how many have been acknowledged. I mean, those who know messaging, they know all these attributes which are commonly tracked. And this, is, this comes uh, built with the platform. It's part of the core platform. All these attributes are monitored. This stores the data. Currently, the setup is that it, the data is available for 15 days. And of course, it is configurable. You can store more data. Now, this is what I was talking about, the expandable platform. So yes, it's a message queue, message delivery, integration platform. But this is built on the expandable nature of the platform. So what we have done is what we call device to dashboard. It's a small plugin, few lines of code. You need to make two to three API or method calls. You can download that the piece of code or the plugin from our GitHub SDK. And what it simply does is your devices are able to send data and the data gets available in the big data database. And then you can build these kind of dashboards, which are user-defined dashboards. So again, it's not a fixed or a hardwired platform. It's just device to dashboard. Data is available in the big database. A user can go in and build his own dashboard like this, monitoring whatever characteristic he use. There's no restriction in the sense that it supports unstructured data. It's built on big data database user-defined database uh, dashboard, and it works out of the box. You can just go and define. As soon as devices start sending data, data is available. And it's also indexed, so it, it has a very fast access. Now, another component which is, again, built on the expandable feature of the platform is data-driven alert. Uh, again, a plugin which you can download, put it on the device, device send the data, and then on the cloud, there is a alert running which reads the rules defined, like you can define some watermarks. For example, here there are some watermarks defined on temperature, humidity, or whatever you, you want to define. And then when those watermarks are hit, uh, email, SMS, or the phone call can be made. And we're also working on adding predictive analytics to it. So because these, I mean, you don't know what's going to happen, right? But the, if you have a lot of data, which is going to happen in the IoT or the Internet of Things, the collective information that comes in can itself define the rule through the predictive analytics. And that can be applied to the same data-driven alerts. 
Now, SDK, documentation, plugin, example codes, this is definitely important for anybody to use this kind of platform. Most of the platform is built on the open source technologies, and whatever SDK and code and plugins are needed, they are available on GitHub. We have extensive documentation, which is available on Read the Docs. And now what I'm going to do is, I, I, I did show you a few things. I'm going to show the real live environment, uh, live demo. And what we did for, for that is, we have some devices of this kind. Uh, I mean, these are very fancy looking, just kidding. But these are any microprocessor-based device. We work with BeagleBone, Arduino. This is a Raspberry Pi, running Python. We have connected some sensors. There's a motion sensor. There's a light sensor. There's a camera. There's a humidity and temperature sensor, and a couple of devices are running in our Virginia office. And just you download a plug-in, a small amount of code, and these devices work with the system. And I'm going to show you some live. Okay, so I'm going to show this one, which popped up. So this is, uh, this is the messaging dashboard, that, which I was talking of. It is running at one of our demo environment, and all the statistics is available up there. There's a little not too good a network connectivity. But you have historical information which is available, and that's configurable. So you can look at how things were working in the past. And then this is the device to dashboard. So we have a couple of devices, few are in, in Miami, and few of them, three of them are in our Virginia office. And these devices are monitoring data, and this is the dashboard that is user defined. I mean, Whatever, it's not fixed on any kind of data. Any schema, it's a schema-less. Any kind of data can come in. It's available, and you can you can use it. And let me see if this thing came up. I don't have a good connectivity, so I'll, I'll skip this. But it is the, it is the management management UI that that we have. So then coming to What's the value? I mean, what is the key targeting or what is the real value proposition that we bring? The most important thing, it's a horizontal data integration platform. It's an open platform, allows you to build functionality, but at the core it provides expandable features, it provides message queue as a service, and it focuses on the openness, uh, uh, open standards, protocols, vendor independence, and high throughput and it supports diversity of devices and application. The ROI comes from the economies of scale. It's a software as a service platform. And building some similar cap capacity at mid-level usage may cost like 600 to 900 annually, versus you can do it on RoboMQ.io in 120 to 150K per, per annum. And the additional ROI comes from the avoidance of the data silos. Once you avoid the data silos, you can really get the networking effect of the data. So that, that was it. We are exhibiting at booth 123. So come see us. We can show some more things and show you the real, the real thing working on the um, Thank you.